This episode of Juice Guru Radio is brought to you by Try Best, making healthy living easy, and J. Cordage, the Juice Man's School of Juicing, available now, proceeds to benefit the J. Cordage Memorial Fund at schoolofjuicing.com. Well, welcome. Welcome to Juice Guru Radio. Discover what the magic and power of juicing can do for you. And now, your host, best-selling author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Juice Fasting, Steve Prusak. Hello and welcome. Welcome to another edition of Juice Crew Radio. I'm your host, Steve, and welcome to the show. We've got a special tribute to my mentor and friend, the Juice Man, Jay Cordich. On this episode of Juice Guru Radio, stay tuned. We've got something really special planned for you. You can find out all about it. So sit back, relax, have a juice, some water, carrot, apple, ginger. That's what I'm going to have in honor of our friend, the phenomenal and legendary Juice Man, Jay Cordich. Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to Juice Crew Radio. I'm your host, Steve. And on today's show, we're paying tribute to the juice man, Jay Cordish. I've got a very special interview he did on the radio back in 1991. It's incredible. I want to just turn it right over to that. Uh, really, is going to connect us with Jay on a whole new level. Bring his teaching out to the masses. Please share this episode with those you love. And we're doing something special at schoolofjuicing.com. If you go there, uh, proceeds to the School of Juicing, which is Jay's life work, a four-module program along with his life work, his lectures, videos, audiobooks, everything. Uh, we're going to have it up there on sale and proceeds to benefit the Jay Cordage Memorial Fund. Uh, your dollars help to donate. So please pick that up now. And now a special interview w- with Juice Man Jay, our tribute here on Juice Crew Radio to my friend, the legendary Juice Man Jay Cordage. Well, good morning, Jay. How are you this morning? Pretty good. Yeah, the Juice Man is uh, feeling fit, huh? Yeah, nice to be on with you, too. I'm feeling pretty good. You know, our lectures last pretty late, uh, and and I've had this horse throat because I've been doing a lot of media, and we just came out of Minnesota, so, so if I don't come out real clear... Uh, forgive me, you know? You're coming out just fine. Okay. I would imagine, too, this time of year, uh, especially as you're traveling through the Midwest, not that you uh, certainly live out west, but here in the Midwest this time of year, springtime, boy, you get uh, weather changes uh, faster than you can say changes. Well, and I imagine that would be tough on you, too. It's not so tough. I'll tell you why. I put six years in Seattle. You want to talk about weather changes? <laughs> yeah. I would you like to not never see the sun for eight solid weeks and drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Yeah, that would do it. That would do it. Yeah, that well, would do it. I've been there. Yeah. Listen, let's find out who the Juice Man is, because okay. there's a lot of things to talk about. You, yeah. are the, you're you not new to this at all. You started a long time ago, and and really, you started in this whole direction for very practical, down-to-earth reasons, didn't you? Well, for me, it was, uh, you know, it was a matter of recovering from a major disease, and uh, the doctor that I went to was uh, was a surgeon, yes, but he, but he broke away from tradition. He started healing all his patients with juices, and uh, that was very radical in his day, and... Um, and uh, I had never had, up until the time I met him, I had never had a glass of freshly made juice in my life, and that was way back in 1948. And uh, I saw what it did for me, and I decided, hey, boy, everybody has to know about this. So I crusaded, I guess. I lost, by, by the way, I want you to know, I lost my first wife and two children because I was bullheaded enough to tell them I'm going on the road, and my ex-wife said, if you go on the road, there's a divorce. And I said, well, I got this calling. I, I got to go. I got to teach people. Nobody knows about this. Sure. And now, and now I've got a, you know, my boys, my boys from my first marriage, one of them is 49 years old, and the other is 44 years old. Yes, for people who, do, who have never seen the Juice Man in person or even on some of the brochures, gentleman is 69 years old, and I'll tell you, Jay, I'll bet you, honestly, you don't look like probably you're past your mid-40s. Well, I've got gray hair, you know, but, but I stay in pretty good shape, and I don't work out as much as I used to, uh, but, you know, I, I, I do the best I can, and, what, and, and the thing about it is I bring into my body to nurture and rebuild myself because we are you know restructurable see we're not we're not something that's an inanimate object like a like an engine block or a light bulb and just wear out we rebuild in fact uh they're finding out that that you can reconstruct the body as you know uh, every seven years you make a complete turnover but you can rebuild all the internal organs of the body and that's why i suppose you know that michael landon bought our juicer last a week ago wednesday and if you read the USA Today, USA Today, this Tuesday of this week, you'll notice what he's doing. He's, you know, he's doing enzymes, he's doing supplementation with vitamins and things like that, but you'll notice what it said in there, uh, his own quotation. He's using 50 pounds of carrots a day, enough to feed a, a herd of horses, he says. 
you know, and naturally he's not eating them because he couldn't eat 50 pounds bulk-wise, so he's juicing, he's juicing, juicing, because they're finding out that it's the juice of the food that once you tap into it and release it, and it gets into the bloodstream, nurtures every cell of your body and rebuilds and re restructures it. That's a beautiful thing about it. You know, 50 pounds of carrots, I bet you could get Bugs Bunny to yell uncle, you know? That's <laughs> a so. lot of roughage. Yeah. And, of course, juicing is the answer. Juicing is the answer. See, to be absolutely healthy, you need approximately 15 pounds of green and yellow vegetables and plant life daily. No way. Nobody can consume that much fiber or bulk. So those of us that understand, and the reason for it is that cellulose fiber, which plants are made of, are relatively indigestible to we human beings. We get no more than 10% of the food value out of it. But that's and, not what fiber is for anyway, right? Well, fiber is, is essential. We, you know, fiber plays a physiological part in the body that it helps you exercise the gums and salivate. And then when you swallow every a well-chewed mouthful, it stimulates what we call the peristaltis, the peristaltic wave of approximately 22 beats a minute. And as it cleans down and being churned down, then when it gets to the colon, it, it, it helps us be regulated and it cleans the colon out. So that's what fiber's for, but fiber doesn't feed us. Not one speck of fiber, even as small as a grain of sand, can get through the intestinal villi to feed them. You'd have a blood clot immediately, within, within minutes. You know? So fiber is needed physiologically. It's the juice that is locked in the fibrous walls that must be released, and that's what feeds the body. And that's where the juicing comes in. That's where the juicing comes in. You, you made a very good point. Uh, I uh, heard you speak, and, uh, and I, have to, I think that's just a, this is a great analogy, that the body literally is a juicer on two legs, isn't it? It is. It is. Anything we eat. I mean, I don't care if you, know, you, if you take a Kentucky Fried Chicken leg and eat it, or a prime rib, or a Big Mac, or a piece of cheesecake, or a rump roast, or, or, uh, or a taco, or, or an enchilada, or, or pasta, whatever you chew and swallow, the body is, of course, going to start digesting it, right? Right. And all it's going to do is break it down to the common denominator, which is juices. It's a well-known fact. Everything must become juice before it can be absorbed. The bulk cannot be absorbed. The fiber can't be absorbed. Only the liquid part of food is, is absorbable, you see? And that's the beauty of a juicer, because when you juice, you're taking these things that are relatively impossible to eat a lot of uh, and also break down. And what you're doing, you're releasing the juices. You're, you're, you're taking the, 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 the real energy away from the body, and everything then when you juice is pre-digested, and it's so simple. It's easy on the body. In other words, what it, what it does, it reserves the body's strength. It keeps the body, especially for these people that are elderly, you know, that, that spend so much energy digesting food. This makes it so easy, so simple, and so complete. It's a, we're talking 100%. In fact, uh, proportionally, you would have to eat 100 carrots. And, you know, I haven't eaten 100 raw carrots in my entire life all added together. <laughs> but, I, but I've juiced. I've juiced over a million. But you'd have to eat 100 carrots to get the same amount of food value as just juicing one or two or three. Is okay. That something? Yeah. See? Now, let, 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 me, let me play devil's advocate. Somebody says to you, okay, Jay, hey, you know, I understand that, that juicing is very healthy for you and it's very good for you. But, you know, we need protein. Yeah. How, what would you say to somebody like that? Well, protein you can get a lot of ways. One, one of my boys, one of my little new boys now in my new family, uh, he loves, my seven-year-old, he loves tofu. Mm -hmm. You know, and that comes from soybeans, and that's powerful. Nuts have protein in it. Pine nuts are great. Pignolas, they're magnificent. Brazil nuts, full of protein. And then you have a combination. How about rice and beans? That's considered to have all, not just eight essential amino acids, but all ten amino acids that will help you synthesize the rest of them. So there you go. But, but, but let's look at the real uh, source of protein. The most, when you're talking protein, you're talking muscle development, building the cells of the body, right? Right. Okay. The most muscular creatures on this planet are vegetarians. An elephant, a horse that's going to race down here at, in Livonia, Detroit race course, a vegetarian. Right. right. The horse that pulls the plow. How about a gorilla? Closest relative on the evolutionary scale to us. Vegetarian. Yeah, vegetarian. All they eat is leaves and the bark of tree. The, the horse grazes on grass. The cow, the steer that we're going to butcher and cut his flesh up. They eat nothing but great. See, a, a steer that we're going to cut him into a rump roast or a T-bone steak, right? They don't ever eat a Big Mac, do they? Nope, not at all. No. The proteins come from, leaf, uh, from grass. In fact, let me give you a, a, a name of a book. It's called Diet and Nutrition, 
The author is Dr. Rudolph Ballantyne, young, good-looking guy, about 45, whatever. He owns a big health resort in Upper Pennsylvania called the Himalaya Health Resort. The book is called Diet Nutrition, and he talks about uh, uh, the ultimate source of food for man, and he says grass, grass, a blade of grass is the most nutritious food for man. However, the nutrients cannot be had by the body unless it's squeezed, pressed, or juiced. So when you're doing things that are green, like parsley juice, which is, I may as well add, the third most nutritious food on planet Earth as far as density of nutrients per calorie, when you put them through a juicer, now you release not just the chlorophyll and the B-complex and the quercetin and some of these uh, the, the things that are just barely being identified, but you release the protein. That's the finest protein, usable protein for human tissue. See, we don't need the protein of an animal. Protein, protein of a steak is, is not compatible to human tissue. That's, that's from a cow's carcass. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah. We don't look at it that way, I know. We, we should think of our own type of protein. Our, all, all life, all life, like I mentioned at the seminars, all life on this planet Earth emanates from the green of the plant, and that's what we should be doing. In fact, if you've noticed, if you noticed all the new articles in all, like the Detroit Free Press and, and the USA Today, you're reading more and more, especially this last month, please get away from all red meats. That's including pork, lamb, and beef, because those are the things that cause colorectal cancer. And it's right on the front pages now. And please, they're, seeing, they're saying, uh, uh, do more fruits and vegetables. In fact, the latest report from the medical profession is they are rethinking our four basic food groups. You know how they have meat and dairy products as two of the important ones? Yeah. They want to throw them out. And all they want is fruits and vegetables, seeds, nuts, and grains as our four basic food groups. That's something, isn't it? Well, it certainly makes sense, too, especially when you're talking about the green part of the vegetables symbolizing the life force because that's what in nature that's the green is what the symbolizes or shows off the photosynthesis the life force of nature it's so exactly right. it would make sense now listen while we're talking about this i you know somebody w would say to me well you know steve geez here you have jay on the line and he's talking about juicing and you're getting all the good vitamins and minerals and and things we don't even know that give us health yet in in this juice but what about, i take vitamins what do i need the juice for well vitamins some of them, at certain times, uh, vitamin C can p play a good. Uh, vitamin E, omega-3 oil for the for the for the heart uh, lubrication, etc. They can they can do certain specifics for you. However, keep in mind that vitamins are only little spokes in the wheel of life. To actually be beneficial, you have to have everything, all the nutrients in in synergy. Uh, to, I call it totality. Everything has to be integrated proportionally correct, and that's what the life of this plant will give you if you can extract the liquid from it. I believe in vitamins for certain conditions, but I don't believe in vitamins and supplementation just randomly. You see what I mean? You mean, in other words, on a day-to-day -day basis? On a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. I, I think you're going to get... Yeah, I think you're, you're going to get... In fact, I'll tell you what. When you're taking supplements, you probably don't have any enzymes. And, and, and that's the key. I, I would recommend if anybody takes like a one a day, they might have glutamic acid in it, they might have mycozyme, they might have a few little uh, enzymes, but hardly any. And there are hundreds of thousands of enzymes out there. So I would suggest to any one of your listeners that are, are taking any kind of supplement, I would take to make it trigger for usability, I would take a supplement in my mouth and I wouldn't wash it down. You know how some people drink a little water as a chaser? Sure. To wash it down? I would, I would take and put little carrot, maybe little carrot parsley, little apple with it, juice, and then, let, and then just take a swig of that, just a sip of it right after the supplement. And now that enzyme structure from that raw vegetable juice will permit you to utilize that vitamin more effectively and efficiently. It's a good way to do it, Steve. Well, you know, I was just thinking, especially this day, age, more, day and age, more importantly than ever, I mean, when you, when you were growing up, uh, Jay, uh, we weren't so uh, pesticide crazy, so that the food that we were getting off the, off the farm was much more nutritious. Plus, we didn't have the pollution problems. Yeah. Would it make sense today, as you just described, if somebody had a daily regimen of juicing, and with that, let's say, took uh, the antioxidant, C, E, uh, to kind of supplement along with the juicing? 
Yeah, I think so, but you've got antioxidants. Remember uh, how I mentioned the watermelon, Ryan? Sure. It's one of the greatest of all. It's one of the greatest anti-aging. Now, it's, it's impossible, you know. Some people maybe bite a few bites of the green and the white rind of a watermelon and chew it up and swallow it. Most of us would get a belly ache from it, you see, trying to digest it. So when you have a juicer available, you have the, the possibility of getting the entities that are unavailable when we just merely eat, because we never, I never have eaten a watermelon rind. So you have the, the option whenever you choose to, to zap it through the juicer. Now you have the superoxide dismutase, and you have the free radical scavengers in that green and white rind of the watermelon. And, and as you have with all uh, uh, veggies, and you have the antioxidants in there, you have substances. Remember the, the word I use, quercetin? Sure. And it's for anybody that has inflammation of the lungs, emphysema, asthma, things like that. And this quercetin lies in leafy greens, and it also lies in onion and garlic. So you can, you can readily accept this substance. Oh, oh I, I forgot to mention this. And when you folks, if any of you do have trouble breathing, emphysema, anything like that, and you find out that this quercetin substance is, is terrific for you, well, it, it's not water-soluble, so it's very difficult to penetrate through the intestinal wall. So I would do something that's kind of contrary to my rule of thumb, that only an apple goes with vegetables. I would always do a chaser, about an ounce or two of, of pineapple juice, because that pineapple juice... The bromelain, that protolytic enzyme bromelain, will help quercetin be absorbed. And boy, that quercetin is a fantastic substance they're finding out because when it does reach the bloodstream, that substance reaches the bloodstream, what it does, it reaches an area where you might have cancer, it makes cancer inert. And that's been all documented now. So these are the new findings that are just fantastic. You know, Steve, they're finding out, for instance, um, uh, uh, we've all been reading about cruciferi, right? The cruciferous foods? Sure, sure. Okay. Now they're finding out when the substances in these cruciferous foods, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, things of that nature, when they get into the bloodstream, then they not only protect us against having colorectal cancer, they prevent mammary tumors in women, breast cancer in other words. And this, too, is, is, is coming to the fore. This, too, is being researched. It's incredible, all this information uh, they're finding out about the properties of these plants. And that's the name of the game. How, how, can, how, how can any one of you out there do any better than bring these juices in? What can you do better? You know, Jay, one of the things that I find very fascinating, not only about the Juice Man Juicer, but the, the, the concept of squeezing all these the life force or vital fluids out of fruits and vegetables sure. is uh, when when I have watched you I mean you'll take the, let, let's just go back to that watermelon rind yeah. something that most of us would not eat at least not very much of and yet I remember as a kid my mother saying you know how much nutrition is in one of those things or let's say uh, the bioflavonoids in citrus with the juicer I mean it's it's seeds it's stems it's rind the whole thing sure Sure, when you make grape juice, the stems and seeds and all go in there. And, you know, if you go out to California, where the big wineries are up in Sonoma, Napa County and all that, mm -hmm. uh, Napa Valley, uh, when, when you see them make the vintage wines, they don't shake the grapes off the stem. They crush the grapes with the stem and all. Now they let it ferment because the properties in the stem are literally... The cord of life that the nutrients flow through to make that grape mature. So you're right, Steve. These things are, are incredible what you can derive from them if you have a juice machine to be able to do, be your own cannery. It's, 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 it's sensational. And the energy and the stamina and, 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 and the, the building up the immune system, you can't do any better. Yeah, and, the and, and, there is. and it's more important than ever with all of the... All of the uh, environmental attacks on our immune system throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, uh, there's something else that I've noticed, uh, too. Um, as you're composting, you have a very unique system where the fiber from whatever you are, I mean, uh, from producing, the fiber gets shoved out in the back. And I was wondering, uh, kind of putting an environmental twist to all of this, could you take that stuff and compost it? Exactly what we recommend. Uh, the residue of the waste... Um, what you do, you kind of dig a hole, mm -hmm. maybe a foot deep in your backyard. If you have some roses or plants around there, then you empty the contents, you know, that's in that back bucket. Sure. And you just bury it, just cover it with dirt. And it, and it recycles. It's, you know, it's biodegradable. It, it'll be new compost and fertilizer. It's like mulch. 
and it's great to re recycle right back in the soil where it belongs, actually, you know? Absolutely. So that's a good way. And, you know, you spoke about pesticides a while ago. Mm -hmm. You know, all that recipe, all those recipes we give everybody, that's, that's our goal is to educate people. You know, juicers are really selling them. They're really secondary. I know, I know everybody's buying our juicer, yes, but really our goal as, as we approach it, and you've seen me now, you notice how I don't emphasize my juicer? That's it's, right. It's yeah. the education. It's the teaching of the people. Because we're turning this country around. My God, it, it's incredible to see to see the reaction on all this. The crowds are going absolutely. Well. And you know what? You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you Steve, what's happening. Um, it, it was my fantasy when I started. You know, to, to to turn this whole country around, and it's happening now because word of mouth. People are calling our office. I can't tell you how many people. Uh, last week, over two thousand people ordered juices from us that have never been to a seminar just by hearing about us from other people recommending. And they call our office, and, you know, they get a Visa MasterCard, and they call up and say, here, I want a juicer. I heard it's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> so that, it, Steve, I tell you, I never thought about it along those lines, you know. I, n I never looked at the, the monetary or the salesmanship end of products. I you never looked at it that way because all my goal was just to educate people, you know, and to see this happening now. God, it, it just... It's just a great feeling inside. It's a feeling of euphoria, and, and it's, like, it's like I'm on a cloud now to see this happening and all these, you know, we've got other speakers now, too, you know. We've got medical doctors are on our team. We have naturopathic doctors on our team. Everybody is gravitating. We, up in Seattle, where our office is, we have oncologists, cancer researchers that work with us and write, and write for our newsletter, and to see all this is the medical people accepting this now after we were rejected, say, you know, 20, 30 years ago, this was heresy. Well, yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to mention that you, uh, you are a man with a mission. You've been in the slammer a couple of times for teaching this kind of stuff, haven't yeah. you? You know, that, you know that chart that we had on the stage? Sure. On that easel, it says cancer, reduce your risk, and on the bottom it's the, it's the American Cancer Society's logo, and all it shows is fruits and vegetables. When I said that, um, oh, God, in 1948 and 49. They, they, they arrested me. They said, you're prescribing. You're, you're, doing, you're telling people something that isn't, isn't so. You're telling them if you take beta carotene, we called it pro-vitamin A then. Sure. And we t and it's a carotenoid. And we said um, uh, uh, people that take beta carotene every day uh, on a daily basis will never have a normal cell turn cancer, cancerous. Now it's absolutely proven. And, and, and when I said it, of course, it was, it was oh, my God, it was like a... Like, where's this guy coming from? Yeah. You know? But yeah. Today, today, the American Cancer Society, National Cancer Institute, they're all involved. In fact, one of my latest communiques is, like I mentioned, when the substances of the fiber reach the bloodstream. Now, remember, the fiber never gets in the bloodstream. It's the substances that are locked in the fiber. Right. Which means the juices, when they get in the bloodstream, are the greatest protectorate, not just against cancer, but heart failure, Hardening of the arteries, which is arteriosclerosis, angina pectoris, which is the sharp pain in the middle, strokes, which is a brain hemorrhage, and pancreatic abnormalities, which is, which is diabetes or, or hypoglycemia, or what Michael Landon has now, pancreatic cancer, you see? And that's what they're saying now. And God, it, it's, it's, like, uh, it's, it's like I'm vindicated, like yes. my life has not been in, in vain, you know? Well, you know, I'll tell you, you're in good company as a health pioneer. I mean, it was either Joseph Lister or Louis Pasteur who, uh, at one point, I think they tried to toss in an insane asylum. So, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, so people who are on the cutting edge, as you are, you're going you're gonna to ruffle a few feathers. Yeah, you know, I'll give you another guy. Sure. Uh, the, greatest, the greatest researcher, one of the great medical doctors of all time, they, the, the, Meri the American uh, AMA crucified him when he came out with vitamin C. And he told you how important it was, antioxidant, and all this other stuff. Linus Pauling. Yep, yep. One of the great Nobel Prize winner in medicine. Yeah. And, and, and then when he said this about vitamin C, they said, oh, wait a minute, he's getting a little senile now, you know? And he was crucified. Absolutely. And, now, and he's been vindicated, too. He's vindicated now. Oh, my God, yes, he's absolutely on the ball. How can a man that brilliant be, be wrong, you know? 
You know how you know you know I think uh, Jay how he gets back at him. The guy's in his mid nineties and he's healthier than all people half his want, age. All the people that wanted to crucify him, <laughs> they're gone. They're, yeah. they're keep eating the steaks and the and, and and the white bread and the sugar and the and the pies and cakes and ice cream and drinking coffee and drinking cocktails and margaritas and and wine coolers and and and, and martinis and they're gone. They're they're smoking their cigar. You know. They're gone. Uh, I guess it, it, it's the, the quality of life that you have yeah. that is the great equalizer for all your critics in years past. Listen, uh, there is an 800 number, I know, and, and, bef- and uh, right after you give the 800 number, I would like to have you uh, pass along to our readers a morning cocktail, veg- vegetable or, ab- or, or uh, uh, fruit cocktail, a great way to start the day. Yeah, and I'll give you three or four good recipes that I like. Okay. Okay? Sure. Let's give them that 800 number. Sure. This is for all you listeners now. Uh, uh, it doesn't cost you a penny. And, and call up and ask for the Juice Man Packet. You're going to get a great big envelope in the mail free. There's about eight beautiful brochures in color done by our medical staff. You guys will really get a great education. Now, here's the number, 1-800-767-1700. And just ask for the Juice Man Packet or Juice Man Information. Now, Steve, you want to you want to talk a little bit about some of the juices? Absolutely. Now, I'm going to give you my juice. This is mine. This is what I do every morning. I always make and I peel the grapefruit, but save the white pulp because the peeling of a grapefruit and an orange has an oil in it that can't be digested or broken down. Okay. It's very raw and bitter. You'd, it'd, be, it'd be an abominable drink if you put the skin in there, you know. But you save the white because the white has the flavonoids, which is going to strengthen all the capillaries and blood vessels, so you don't have a, a hemorrhage you know, or a contusion or anything like that. Okay, now, 50-50, grapefruit and pineapple. And the reason it's, it's beneficial to me, I played a lot of football when I was younger. I played in the Rose Bowl for USC, and, and uh, I, was, I was signed up by the Green Bay Packers, drafted by him, and never did play because I, I, um, I had that cancer by that time, and it was, I thought it was just a groin pull, but it, but it was an inoperable tumor, and that's what got me under the juices. Anyway, the reason I like this particular combination it's the best drink in the world to alleviate pain of the joints if you have, like I do, a football injury, which is reverted to degenerative arthritis. Mm-hmm. So that's a great thing if you have inflammation of the joints. The quinine of the grapefruit and the bromelain enzyme of the pineapple work synergistically to reduce the swelling and the pain. That's a good one. It's a little bitter now. The grapefruit is bitter, but that, that bitterness signifies quininic acid. Uh, uh, a better tasting drink for some of you folks would be orange and pineapple or tangerine and pineapple. I just happen to love that bitter kind of a taste with the grapefruit pineapple. Sure. Let, uh, Jay, before you get to the, you know, you were talking about the bioflavonoids or the white stuff in on the inside of the skin of uh, almost all citrus fruits. Right. How would you get that out? Would you scrape that off or something and then put it in the juicer? Yeah, what you do, you just... You just take. I take a knife, but some people use a potato peeler, uh-huh. and they just take the coloring of an orange off, or or pair off the yellow or the orange coloring of a grapefruit or a or or an orange, and leave that thick white pulp on. Then you cut your orange and half it or quarter it, push it through the juicer, because the flavonoids, and they they think there's over a thousand different kind of flavonoids now, and the, that flavonoids you'll get them out of your drink. And by the way, I want you to know, to get enough bioflavonoids vitamin P, double P, K, and K3, and they do a lot of things, Steve. Oh, they're great. They, 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 you know, in this nuclear age of ours, yeah. they will strontium-90 and radioactivity, they'll neutralize it, so maybe keeping you from having leukemia or some other thing that could happen, or, or the bone mass density would diminish or whatever, so, so you, you wouldn't have osteoporosis. That, that white pulp is absolutely beneficial, but it's hard to eat a lot of it. You know, it doesn't taste, it tastes blah. Yeah. But you can juice it. You see, always remember, keep this uppermost in your mind, when you do something, you get at least 10 times more food value than you would by eating, because the body can't break it down as well as a juicer can to extract the juices. So anyway, the bioflavonoids are in the white pulp. That's the best part. And it comes out very, very creamy, fiberless, very white, and very thick, but fiberless. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, you have, see, that's the way you do orange juice also. Now, here's another drink of mine. Okay. In fact, I've got some sitting over here on the table. I'm going to make some here in a few minutes. A handful of parsley. And the reason you use parsley, it's the third most nutritious food on planet Earth. The first one is not available to us. Farmers raise it to have healthy livestock. Fresh alfalfa. The 
big broad leaf. Yeah. You know, that's number one. Wow. Number one food on planet Earth, fresh alfalfa, because alfalfa roots go down to the ground and spread out and draw the nutrients from anywhere from 50 to 150 feet away from the root itself, and they draw all the nutrients in. In fact, if a farmer raises alfalfa, any one of the farmers out there right now, if they raise alfalfa, boy, they can't raise anything the next year on that. They'll have to rotate their crops and replenish the soil with nutrients. Alfalfa's powerful stuff. Anyway, so uh, since you can't have alfalfa, go for the third most nutritious food. Second most is turnip greens. The third most is parsley. So what I always do, and I drink about a quart to a quart and a half of this a day to build up my immune system. Mm -hmm. So I take a handful of parsley, push it through my juicer, about four or five carrots and one apple. And God, Steve, is that a delicious drink. You know, it, doesn't, it may not sound to some people, uh, what Jay's saying right now, who, are, who don't have a, a taste necessarily for vegetables or fruits, because Lord knows uh, we're not raised with that very much these days. Uh, I am a, uh, a living witness that that stuff tastes very good. Yeah, you would never believe it, you know, especially when you see some of these green drinks. They look like Halloween, you know. It looks kind of ghostly. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I find it very interesting and no coincidence that the top three foods that you just mentioned are all green. Are all greens. Yeah. Believe me. Well, you know, the guy that used to work with Ralph Nader that branched off on his own, Dr. Harold Jacobson. Sure. Uh, he put out a book about ten years ago called Nutritional Scoreboard. And he's, uh, he's got a great research team in Washington, D.C. It's a nonprofit organization. Great stuff. That book, if you can find it, Nutritional Scoreboard, will equate all foods on planet Earth. Tapioca pudding, it'll tell you what it has. A shot of Jack Daniels whiskey, it'll tell you what it has. A banana, <laughs> a banana it'll tell you what it has. You know? It's really a great book for, for, for all this information about calories and food values and substances and whatever. So he did his research with his research team in Washington, D.C., and, and, and he rates these foods. All, you'll notice on top... All greens, and the number one animal product, you know, and he gives everything a score from zero to 300. Yeah. And the number one animal product, you figure, had about 250 points on the scale of zero to, uh-uh. You know what it has? Number one animal product has only 92 points. And the number one fruit of the world, cantaloupe, is equal to it. It has 90 points. Now, the number one animal product I used to think was eggs. It isn't. You know what it is? What? Baby beef liver. No kidding. Okay, number one animal product, baby beef, but only 92 points. All the other ones that have 300 points, 296, 280, 270, 260, and all the way down to 92 are all greens and then some grains. Isn't that something? Well, it is, but it isn't as if somebody listens to what you have to say because there's something I think that you say, and you put it very succinctly, that the only way that you get life is from things that are alive. That are alive, yeah. That's... He, and, uh, was it, he was in my room right now, then he walked to, to package. He's going to give a seminar today. He's down at the, you know, we're going to give a seminar down the Hyatt, um, uh, I don't know what, he, but anyway, Smokey Santillo. He's uh -huh. Dr. Santillo. Sure. He's my buddy. He's a kickboxer. He's, he's right next door to me now. He's packing his suitcase because he's got to go down and give a seminar. He's, he's a kickboxer. He's 42 years old. G guess what, Steve? He just ran a 4 4 40. For 42 years old, he ran a 4 4 40. That's world class. Yeah, it is. He's, he's a great athlete, and he's put out a book, and I want you all to buy it. It's all about enzymes. It's called Food Enzymes. He studied under Dr. Howell, who was the originator of enzymology. And he, in fact, he put 42 years before he died at 95 years of age in, in, in the field of enzymology. And they find out when you put cooked food in your body, when you cook or steam anything, you put that thing molecularly in altered states, and the pancreas and the whole immune system is destroyed. You, you, you weaken the whole body when you put cooked food. See, cooked food, folks, listen. Cooked food takes 48 hours and longer to digest before you evacuate the residue. When you eat the food raw, it's, it has its own digestive, digestive faculties, which are enzymes in the life force, and it's out of your body within 17 hours. And still you only get the 10% or less of the food value. And when you make juices, it's pre-digested in a matter of minutes. The body doesn't lift a finger. Yeah. The nutrients in your bloodstream now, and you get 100% rather than 2 or 3 or 4 or 5%. What well, a difference, huh, Steve? It sure is a big difference. And for, and for people who are listening, and if you're listening to what Jay is saying, it almost sounds like you, you can't eat cooked food anymore, and, I, and, and maybe that's how you choose to go. But before you go, you've got to be informed. Jay, do you have that 800 number? They can call. Well, let's do it one more time. Right. So at least they get the information, and once they're informed, then they can make an intelligent decision. Sure. Steve, every time you eat some cooked food, I'm not going to, you know, I eat some pasta once in a while, but as soon as I eat a pasta, I sprinkle, uh, anytime you guys eat anything cooked, like a baked potato or anything, sprinkle a whole bunch of chopped raw onions. That'll put the enzymes 
and that'll make the food be processed within 17 hours. Boy, that's sharp. I never, I didn't hear you, but that's fabulous. Listen, you guys got to go out and get a hamburger. Say, hey, I want a slice of raw onion in there. Don't cook the onion. Put the raw onion in there. Now that hamburger meat and put some lettuce in there. Now you've got enzymes, right? You got it. That's the way to do it. See? You, you go out and have an omelet in the morning on the way to work. You're, you you want to stop and have some a nice big omelet, a Denver omelet, a mushroom omelet, cheese omelet. Make the waitress bring you a dish of diced, chopped raw onions. Sprinkle it on top, so eat the omelet. Now you put the enzymes with the raw onions. That's it. And all day long, the rest of the day, you have your juice. You have your juice. You eat a salad. Eat a couple bananas. Here comes summertime. Eat some watermelon, some cantaloupe, eat some p- peaches and plums. And, hey, right out here in Michigan, you've got the best peaches in the world, the Red Haven peaches. Yeah, they're very good. My God, you've got all this raw food around you. Good apples here, too. Yeah, well, great. You've got the number one apple in the world, the Northern Spy. The Northern Spy Apple is raised right here in Michigan. The, I guess the uh, short term for it is a spy. But, but, but eat as much raw food as you can. And I'm not going to begrudge you. Listen, you go out and get a nice juicy steak, because some of you aren't going to give up your meat and whatever, fish, whatever. Okay, as soon as you come home, you, got, you went to a restaurant, you watched the Tigers play baseball, bingo, you come home, you, you take the pineapple and run the pineapple juice through only two or three ounces, and you take a nice swig of that stuff. Now, the enzyme bromelain will help you metabolize the coarse amino acids of that animal so you end up not having protonosis or bladder problems or prostate problems or urinary problems. See what I mean? I got you. It's easy, Steve. That's why they call you the juice man. You know this stuff. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Not only does he know it, but he lives it. What's that 800 number again? 1-800-767-1700. And, boy, you asked for the juice man information. And you're going to get some great stuff free of charge in the mail. And oh, by the way, Steve, that, that 800 number is good 24 hours a day. Seven days a week? Seven days a week. All righty. So, you, you know, if you forget to do it, just jot the number down. When you get a little time, call up. won't cost you a penny. And, boy, are you going to get an education by reading those brochures. Or you can call me here at the station. Okay. I have the 800 number, and I'll be glad to pass it on to you. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Juice Man, Jay Cordish, listen, would you do me one favor? Okay. Next time you're in town, let's do this again. Hi, this is Jay Cordish, the father of juicing. Juicing helped me get rid of cancer in my early 20s, and here I am in my 90s feeling fantastic. I want to invite you to join me in our School of Juicing. This online program features award-winning videos, audio books, and CDs to inspire and educate you on how juicing can change your life, too. Check out our site at schoolofjuicing.com. Start living healthy and increase your energy today. Visit schoolofjuicing.com to find out more. That's school of juicing.com what more can we say um, in dedication to our friend my mentor jay cordage he endorsed my book juice guru i was able to create the school of juicing with him and his beautiful wonderful wife linda cordage hope you could invest in the jay cordage memorial fund the juice man at school of juicing.com get yourself his one-of-a-kind phenomenal groundbreaking life-changing teachings and donate to his memorial for a big celebration we're having here in L.A. in August. And hopefully you can make it out to that, too. Thank you. I'm Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Juice Guru Radio. Find out more about us at JuiceGuru.com. Until next time, get your juice on.